Hey everyone, welcome back. And I'm gonna take this video out to actually discuss the master plan of CodeDamp, what we are trying to build, what is gonna happen, what is the vision, why you can start learning on CodeDamp for $20 or $9.99 subscription, what's what's the whole genesis behind CodeDamp as a platform. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of story, my background itself, which is actually mostly the story. I started I started off as a web developer when I was 13, 14, you know, 12, 13, around that age. But obviously, because when you start at such a young age, such an early age, you never really learn programming to get a job, right? You learn it because for the fun of it, it's, it's fun to build stuff, it's fun to create things. And I do believe till a certain degree, a lot of people who do programming actually enjoy programming and they can enjoy it even more if they are actually learning and if they are actually doing the right things. So when CodeDamp came into existence, one of the first things which I knew was that I wanted to do something about learning because learning was a concept which I felt felt like is uh, something which still needed to be learned from hundreds of different places and this is something I also say like you should not stick to only one source you should keep one source as the primary source and other sources as secondary sources to remove the bias but still a lot of times one person is actually learning from YouTube then they're learning from Udemy, then they're learning from XYZ platform, then maybe they're also learning from CodeDamp, then maybe they're also learning from MDN and so on. And this is like, this is also fine. What some people do is they are actually learning web development, web three, mobile application development, blockchain, data science, MLAI, and, and that's that's not the way to go about. So one of the first things I wanted to make sure with CodeDAM as a platform is that if you're coming on this platform, we want to make sure you're learning programming because one of the things which I found out in my journey itself, I tried a lot of things. I tried Android application development. I tried game development. I tried desktop application development with VB.net and stuff like this. I tried web development. I tried security research. And after trying everything, what I found out was that web dev was something which I was able to grasp a lot easier and faster than others and this is something I want to head into as well. Similarly, what I have realized is that if you're trying to do too many things together, you end up doing no thing in, in a good way, right? And usually because I was 12, 13, I was able to spend five, four, five, six years just figuring out till 16 and 17 that I, I like web development and I have to go into all into that. So around then 2021, I mean, basically, you see that this is kind of nine years, but it's the all in years are basically in this range, 15 to 21, 22. All right. So once the learning part was out of the way with CodeDAM, the second part, which I knew was practice, because this is again, one thing which I really, really observed. What exactly was I doing at the age of 12, 13, 14? Because I was consuming a lot of resources. That's fine. But I was also building a lot of stuff which none of these resources actually tell you. YouTube doesn't show you. I mean, these places show you, but they don't, they cannot really force you in a way to do that. Udemy cannot force you. XYZ cannot force you. It's, it's about, if you want to think it about in a way, then you should think about the fact that you are listening to a radio and you're trying to imagine a visual versus you're actually watching a video. That is the difference between what you do when you're watching a video on programming versus when you're actually practicing it on your own. So what video did to radio, the playgrounds on CodeDAM, the interactive learning part on CodeDAM is doing to the video tutorials. This is completely fine. This, you need videos, you need the creator touch, you need people to learn from, but you also need to practice it hands-on in a real environment right away. And this is the reason why I prefer to build a completely from scratch platform, which supports courses, which are fully interactive and they boot up a complete environment, no buggy abstractions or nothing as such, because we want to go full stack. You want to go all the way into front end, back end, data science, everything. And then I'll come to that later down the line, but that's the idea. Now, these were the two things which were sufficient enough for me to open a company, right? As, as just getting out of the college, I was 22. I got up to the college. I had a product where I would share what I was learning. I mean, my video tutorials themselves. And I also had 
a decent approach, a decent infrastructure of you guys practicing something as well. But a couple of things, a couple of important things which I have recently realized is the third thing is jobs and internships. Now, again, this was not specifically true in my case. That is why it took me very long to understand. I did not start here with the vision of a job or an internship, but most people who start here or over here, or maybe sometimes even later down the line, they are actually, in most cases, they are looking to either do a transfer of job, maybe get a raise, maybe, you know, do something around their own skill sets, right? Or they just want to build experience. And what I saw in my four, five, six, seven years of journey is that this, like I mentioned, I did a ton of mistakes. I did a ton of stuff on my own, but I could do afford to do that because well, I had a lot of time, but a lot of people don't have such time. And obviously this four, five, six, seven year journey can be easily compressed into one year, 13 months, 14 months, 15 months. That's absolutely possible. And if you are even aggressive, I mean, 10 months is also like a, like a great way of just acquiring all the knowledge and then experience building just takes time. So the point here is that what I did in the span of seven years, you can technically do in 10 years in terms of not 10 years, 10 months, 12 months in terms of knowledge. But obviously that experience part comes with time. But that's not usually a hard requirement as well for jobs and everything. So what I realized was that people want to learn, then people want to practice, but then people also want to get a job and an internship. And this is something which we are actively working on right now on Codam to integrate this as a core value of the product. Because so far we have learning as the core value, practicing as the core value because if I have not announced here yet, I think we have also made the compute part on CodeDAM fully free. That means you can launch playgrounds, you can practice in them, you can do anything you want, you can create standalone projects for completely free. And you'll see a bunch of videos here from other creators, from me. We are trying to push this a little bit, but the compute part on CodeDAM, one of the aims of CodeDAM is to make sure that you are able to practice on any device, whether that's a phone, whether that's a laptop, whether that's a desktop, it doesn't matter. You should be able to practice, you should be able to learn from any device possible. The third step in this journey is getting you a job and an internship. But what after that? Well, obviously you need a community which pushes you along the way. And again, this is like a cyclic thing because as a developer, sure, I mean, you can stop after getting a job. You can definitely stop after getting a job. But if you're someone who really enjoys being a programmer, and you really enjoy just leveling up yourself, taking yourself to the next level, what's next? SDE one, two, three, vice president, <laughs> CTO, I don't know what, what's, what's your aim is, but the tech side of things usually, I mean, in a hierarchy like companies, standard company stops at CTO, right? There's no higher position than CTO. So, I mean, just planning out your journey all the way to a very ambitious goal. This will obviously take years of time and years of effort, but what you also need alongside the learning part is the community and interactivity and getting to know what is happening in the world itself, right? And that is the final piece of the puzzle, which I have recently figured out that this is something which we need to bring in after the jobs. And I mean, basically the community part is integrated in all the flows, but dedicatedly, once you have the job, once you got something in your hand, then the community part becomes really important for you to just stay up to date with stuff. Now, one of the things which you cannot see over here on this board is competitive coding and DSA. And that is something which I also tried out a lot of times, 14, 15. I think if you go back into my Facebook profile, you will be able to see me participating in Google Code Jam, Facebook Hacker Cup. I even had a few local competitions in the school itself. So I have tried it, you know, a good amount of times and a good amount of attempts I have given to DSA and competitive coding, but I was someone who genuinely did not like how people would just sit on random problems and solve them all day. When I could fire up a browser, a text editor, Notepad++ at that time, and just start coding some pages in PHP and HTML and CSS and see output in real world, right? And I saw that websites are built in that way. I saw that freelancers are paying me online on Fiverr and I'm getting paid to do stuff. So I knew from the very starting, from a very early age, the stuff which is web development and things, this is the actual thing people pay for. DSN competitive is something which, which is more like a sport, which is okay, you want to just play it, it's fine. But later down the line, I realized that that sport is actually used as a gateway to get into the companies just because no company has really figured out how you can quantify the experience in web development and practicing and community, not exactly community, in the whole development space. How do you quantify that? You quantify that 
with the person's experience. You quantify that with the amount of effort the projects the person has built and so on. You quantify that by the parent platform in case code dam for example in case of code dam saying to the other company that hey this is this guy or this girl is the person they have completed the full stack learning path they have covered html css javascript react node.js redis all the caching concepts this and that and to back all of these learnings they have these five they have these seven they have these ten major projects again hosted on code dam with a single link to the playground, right? So that's that's something which is happening in the background. I mean, this is not something you are even actively doing. When you're completing a full stack learning path, for example, you're learning, you're practicing, and what you're practicing, we are recording. What you're building, we are recording. And we will help you prepare the full breakdown of whatever you are doing, just so that we are able to help you in this area to not go through the competitive and DSA coding rounds. Because trust me, as a company, I definitely know that this other person actually knows their stuff. They know how to build something with Chrome extensions or you know web development or mobile app, doesn't matter. I would never really consider a DSA round as a hardcore requirement, right? And that is what we aim to remove from the industry. People just basically using DSA and competitive coding. And, and let me just clarify one thing real quick. When I say DSA over here, data structures and algorithms is very important true but when i say dsa and competitive whenever i am talking about dsa and competitive i'm talking about the problems which are extremely hard which are asked in facebook and google and apple and amazon interviews right so these are the problems i'm not talking about that you should not know about strings and arrays and hash maps and objects and weak maps even for example if you want to but you should absolutely don't have should not have a knowledge how to traverse a graph on bfs dfs on the top of your fingertips right you should not i mean you could have known that but i would rather i mean if you're if you're sitting for a system design interview or for a react native developer why would i want you to ask this when i can ask you have you created any native module in react native what's the pain point you have seen in you know auto linking which was introduced in react native 0.59 what kind of apps you have built what kind of experience do you have what do you know about server side rendering for example in, in case of web development why would i ask you a question that you are here you want to reach here you have three steps and you have to take the shortest why the hell would i ask you something like this it's not relevant to me but people ask you this because they don't have any other way to quantify your experience. That's that's what we will change when we are integrating the practice part and the learning part with the jobs part. Hopefully that will come into the beta stage like I mentioned in the launch video of the jobs thing. We are still in alpha preview right now. It will move to beta, it will move to public release. It will happen slowly, it will happen steadily. So now people complain that why do I have to pay for the learning path? First things first, you have to pay very less, $20 per month. At least the people who are watching in US, UK, the city of one country, this is nothing for you. And don't lie to me if you think that this is something to you. It's not. For Indian people, it's a little bit expensive. I can agree for a lot of people. It's $9.99 per month. But we do offer 50% discount for students. So if you're a student, you can avail 50% off directly. And then it drops to $4.99 per month, which is, I don't think, is a lot of amount honestly this is also not a lot of amount this is also not a lot of amount given that the best case the realistic even realistic case roi is that if you spend this for eight months or ten months for 200 usd or in this case for seven eight thousand five six seven eight thousand INR, you have the potential to land a job which pays you massive. In US, I think it's the average salary is 100K per year for a front end full stack developer. In India, for example, you can easily land a job anywhere between 10 to 16 lakh of, you know, CTC, which is what we say. 16 lakh per year, you're paying 10,000 for 10 months. I mean, that's that seems like a fair deal to me. And the fact that you're doing this on your own and on your own pace with the community, with the jobs part, with the learning part, with the practice part, with the compute part is awesome. If it was possible to extract money out of this whole process from any other place, we would have done it. It is possible to do it here, over here. I promise you the moment we figure out that if we can possibly extract money out of here on this step, like charging companies to hire people and this is sustainable 
we will make the education part free, right? It will be completely free on the platform. But as a business, as a startup, as a company, we also have to make money somewhere to survive, to sustain. Because if we make everything free in this flow, it will collapse really quick. I mean, everything, everything requires money. It does not matter which company is doing it. Even Free Code Camp, for example, needs your donation. It needs your support. It runs ads. It's, it does a lot of stuff. So like I said, we need funds to survive, obviously. But what we want is we want to tie up that need of fund to the jobs part somehow so that we can even make the education part free going forward. But yeah, I mean, let's see. This is as low as it can get for a fully you know, end-to-end -end solution of learning to getting a job to community part. But again, making sure that this works requires us to also run this at a global scale, not just in a local city or in a bunch of 10, 15 people. So obviously any support, anything helps any number of people you make aware about code and that definitely helps. So I hope you understood a little bit about the master plan, the master vision of CodeDAM. Obviously, I'm sure that there would be a bunch of components coming in a few years down the line when I realize more of the stuff maybe a few things get refactored a few things clarify a little bit more as we go forward but this is the state in of code dam in february 2021 2022 not 2021 and hopefully we will be able to make a platform which is not only super super duper cheap but it's also super high quality and allows you to get hundreds of thousands of dollars of job just by spending a few hundred dollars in a span of a few months. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Do check out Codam Learning Paths if you're interested, Codam Pro memberships. If not, then make sure you just share it with your friends. That's also help. That's all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Codam's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching.